we have the potential to not only impact brand awareness, but building brand loyalty and increasing brand perception. And some of the best ways to do this are engaging individuals over the course of time. Be proactive. So um, I'd like to introduce myself. I'm Mike Eckert, a former CEO of the Weather Channel and of a company called Pathfire. Uh, both of those companies were involved in the media business and participated in the evolution of the media industry from analog technology to digital technology and saw dramatic changes in the way um, content and information was delivered or is delivered to consumers. So let me introduce myself. Uh, my name is Matt Crenshaw. I'm president of a new media company called Mother Nature Network. Um, in in a, a recent former life, I was also the head of digital marketing for Discovery Communications. Um, so like Mike, I have experience in the cable TV industry. And um, my background has always been on the digital side. So you know, when we talk about the evolution from old media to new media, from analog to digital, from um, kind of the water cooler to social networks. Uh, you know, I've always lived in kind of the new world. And um, I should also say, you know, I was originally a, a journalist by training, didn't get very far doing that, and uh, got more into the data side of things. So as digital has evolved, I've always looked at it from the standpoint of, of what data do we have available? You know, how does that make for sort of better decision making? Now we live in this age of automation where you almost don't even see the data anymore. So I think it portends some interesting things for, for media and, and where big media is going. So building on, on what Matt said, this, uh, the issue of digital technology and data and brands and consumers and consumer usage of media becomes very interesting. I remember when the Weather Channel, which had established itself as a very successful regular analog television business, uh, introduced weather.com, which was a digital network, of course, and uh, a digital network per se. And um, what, uh, what we found as we conducted research and climbed inside analytics is we found consumers were uh, obtaining and um, accessing weather information and utilizing weather information in, in ways that they heretofore couldn't when analog technology only existed. And that had a dramatic impact on the Weather Channel's brand and on the products that it was developing for this new platform called weather.com. You know, one of the things that I saw coming from a pure play digital company uh, being acquired by Discovery, so confronting that kind of transition that you're talking about, Mike, the challenge with digital is, you know, you take the Weather Channel, you take Discovery, you know, those were ultimately content brands at their core. And, and you know, the, the leaders of those companies thought, how do we become great content companies? The reality, and you talk about this, you mentioned this with the um, launch of weather.com, is digital forces media companies to do things that, you know, that weren't originally in their DNA, to be products companies, right? So launching websites, launching mobile apps, launching video players, to get much more so into the distribution game. Uh, Matt, building on that, um, uh, you spent a part of your career at Discovery. Um, can you speak to how you saw that transition occur mm -hmm. relative to products, analytics, brand, related to the various um, sub-brands, the different networks or brands within the Discovery portfolio? Yeah, it's a great question. So I think we started out in the early days with the assumption that the web was just another content delivery channel, right? So it's, let's just put out great content. The reality is, you know, you have to have great products. It has to be a user interface that's engaging. People have to know what to expect from, from the online product, the mobile product, et cetera. And, you know, that may be different from, you know, Discovery Channel was one brand in our portfolio. We also had TLC, we had Animal Planet, we had Science, uh, Military, about a dozen cable networks in all. Originally, we started out with, well, this is easy. Let's just build common templates, right? And, and, but, you know, that's like saying, you know, 
all, all of these audiences are fundamentally the same, which nobody on the programming, marketing, or sales side would, would, would ever believe. So, you know, we started to realize that different audiences have different product expectations and that delivering content, delivering great content and trying to package it all up the same way wasn't really good enough. You know, I, uh, uh, something related to uh, our, our discussion today struck me as I was watching the Emmy Awards on Sundays. And um, I was thinking about the traditional media brands being the broadcast and cable networks, the ABCs, NBC, CBSs, Discoveries, TBSs, and the like, um, more on the entertainment side. And, um, and I was thinking about those brands, but none of those brands were winning Emmy Awards. The winners of the Emmy Awards were the shows. Yeah. And it struck me that, in, 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 in as I thought about um, mobile technology and streaming and players and other different technologies are, that, are, uh, that have evolved and will continue to evolve relative to uh, distributing this content, these programs, I wondered if a transition is occurring where the real brands in the minds of consumers today are the programs and not the brand name of the channel. And, and wondered if you had any points of view on that. Yeah, well, well, first of all, I think for the majority of networks, you're absolutely right. You know, to go back to the Weather Channel, probably not. You know, but it's so clear what it stands for. It's interesting, even as we've seen these, these channels emerge around topics, like I'm thinking of HGTV and Food Network, you still have stars and shows and chefs, in the case of Food Network, that people really identify with. The days, I think, of saying, I love Discovery, you know, I watch Discovery all the time, you know, regardless of what the programming is, I don't know that I ever lived in that world. You know, I think you make a really good point. The loyalty is with, with characters, it's with talent, it's, it's with shows. Yeah, and, and, and I'm wondering where that will evolve, and I, I have a suspicion that um, media brands, as we, the large media brands as we know them today, those being the brand names of the networks, will diminish over time. And I have a suspicion that as fragmentation and data creates more um, fine tuning in terms of what consumers are seeking and interest in, interested in um, on, on, a, on a customized and personalized basis, that the, the importance of a, of a network's brand name will maybe not even exist anymore. If I were a producer of that product, um, and I was licensing or selling that product to a show, to a, um, a media brand, a network, um, uh, would I prefer to handle the marketing of that show, that program, because that may be where the value lies, or would I, uh, 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 as part of my deal, allow the network to do that? That's a great question. And uh, the way I look at it, I think you're absolutely right, the, the power base call it that has shifted back to the shows right and originally if you were producing a show you had to go to a network to get distribution in the digital world distribution is not your challenge precisely right yeah. and so fundamentally it becomes about who can create content that really appeals to an audience right you know there are still videos on YouTube to this day in, in series where I could say oh have you seen this have you seen that and you say no I've never seen it and it has 30 million views and, and since you've introduced that, that subject, why don't we transition to, uh, in, in your opinion, the um, influence of social media on branding shows and programs, but also networks um, today and where you see that going? Uh, it's a great question. So when I was at uh, Discovery, I ran the social media team and there was a lot of discussion and a lot of sort of trial balloons to see what is the right integration of social and television and you know the answer as you might imagine is it depends every show is different audiences are different um you know we did a lot to put sort of you know the twitter stream on the screen did a lot of our own research to look at you know these kinds of posts sort of correlate to this sort of behavior um the reality is you know nielsen just did the recent study that um, i think it was 29 percent of uh, people can be influenced to tune into a new show based on what they see on twitter are you seeing uh, in, in your own experiences with Discovery or Mother Nature or as you deal with other media entities that um, usage of social media is, is um, 
on an increasing basis being utilized by these media brands, the brands being the networks or the programs themselves? Yeah, that's a great question. I, I am seeing evidence and have seen evidence of programming teams tapping into social, you know, um, and, and sort of looking for where's the conversation? What, what do fans want to see happen? Who are the side characters that they're talking about that may be worthy of getting their own show? That sort of thing. Because on one hand, social is the greatest focus group that's ever existed, right? It's people speaking candidly at scale to each other, you know, and, and the nature of it is it's fully transparent. The rest of us get to, get to look in, including the programmers, the marketers, the salespeople. So um, I, I think social and TV are going to become as inextricably tied as social and mobile. You know, you can't imagine picking up your phone and not accessing a social network. It's like, you know, they were made for each other. TV is going to be the same way because TV, as I mentioned, has always been an inherently social medium. The social stuff just happened offline, you know, the next day. Right, right. So how about um, uh, an, uh, a service like Insight Pool, which provides um, very unique uh, technology and opportunity for uh, a marketer or a brand to even more deeply understand consumer, consumer usage, of a brand or a product, um, and and the implication of that on a television network, perhaps a Hollywood studio, a production company. Yeah, great question. So I, it starts for me. I think there are probably a few ways to answer that, but it starts for me with the idea of prospecting the right people. You know, in the age of mass media, there was mass marketing, right? And you see a billboard for a movie. You know, nine out of 10 billboards for movies I see, I think, gosh, it's too bad they just wasted that impression because I'm not gonna go see that movie, right? The beauty of a tool like Insight Pool is looking at the way people are behaving on social media, looking, creating kind of lookalikes, creating friends, you know, where are the friends, where are the followers, you know, and saying, you know, getting into a game of inferences and saying, you know, there's a high probability this is the right kind of person, right? That part is great, but that part to me isn't the real breakthrough. The breakthrough is then being able to message to them on a on an individual basis, where I can say, "Hey, Mike, you know, we know you love this movie. Just wanted to let you know there's a sneak preview of this other movie playing at the Plaza Theater on Saturday." If I get that, if you get that message, or if I were to get that message, that's interesting. That's essential. It sounds like somebody knows me. The reality is, I think you're going to see sort of the world bifurcate between black box data and data that a marketer can make sense out of. And you know, you look at a lot of the, the ad exchanges and the retargeting systems. And you know, when I ran digital marketing at Discovery, there were all of these tools being pitched to me, and it just sort of ended with, the pitch ended with, and trust me, the black box can figure it out. I think there's a limited appetite for that. I really do. I think you look at sort of the larger news stories about privacy and everything. Um, I wouldn't bet, I wouldn't go long on that future, but you know, I think what's more interesting is when you, know, you referenced Insight Pool, a tool that can say, no, these are the people, they have names, they have social accounts, here's what you're sending them, this is messaging that you've crafted, here's a success rate, here's a, you know, an open rate, a response rate, you can track that through to other sorts of behaviors through the digital ecosystem. I think that's the right way to think about data as opposed to there's somebody that's a lot smarter than the rest of us who figured this out and let's just blindly trust that person. Yeah, I, I, I agree. As there's so much data coming, um, there are, there are, there's a dearth of platforms to help brands um, digest data and cut it. Mm -hmm. And I think a, a service like Insight Pool provides that as well. So thanks for your time today. Tremendous insights. Uh, uh, your, your background, I, I think, has positioned you with, with as many great things you've done in your career. I think it's only beginning now where technology will be bringing you. So thanks for the time. Thank you. Yeah.